So some of what I'm going to say is actually going to overlap with what Genghis Bey talked about. Tabit is, I think, one of our favorite examples, so I will talk about it briefly. And then I will also uh, talk about what data science and data scientists is, because I think there's still a lot of confusion about what it really is. I mean, I have a program of, in big data analytics, and the students are <coughs> almost halfway, more than halfway through the program. And there are still some students who are asking me, what is data science, and what am I going to be when I grow up? So. Um, we all know data is the future. Tomorrow's jobs are going to be all about data. In fact, I have a favorite example to give. I say, in 20 years, there will not be any physical trash collectors. There won't be any men on the street collecting trash. But there will be the lowest type of blue collar job. That will be data trash collection. These people will be people who know programming. People think that's something that you, you think is a very, like, blue, white colored skill right now. Most of the data cleaning will be done by AI, deep learning, but there is going to be some non-patterns in the data that will not be easily cleaned by automated systems. So you'll have to have these white color programmers who have to write little programs and go clean the data. And I think that's really probably the lowest type of job you'll see. Or if you think about law, Today, there's a lot of different types of law, international law, business law, etc. I think in 20 years, most of law degrees are going to be about data, how data is governed, how, we, how people use our data, how we actually own our own data. So if you are in this room, you obviously have seen this trend, but we need to make sure that we become messenger, messengers to the rest of the world, that data is really the future. So, What's a data scientist? What is data science? What, are, what is data analytics? You keep hearing these terms, and I wanted to give my perspective on what I think these are. So data science, similar to what you have shown, Marcos, is a, is a combination of many different skills. But I think what makes data science different than data analytics is the word science. Science means you're actually pushing the boundary of something. You're trying to find something new. You're trying to find innovative ways of doing things that you don't even know possible. Whereas analytics part is actually you have some business problems and you want to solve those problems. And you want to solve those problems using data. So I think that's the key difference between the data scientists and data analytics people. And I think they're both equally important. But since data science and data scientists is a sexier title, you kind of see it more. But don't be fooled. There is a bit of, I think, uh, not brainwashing, but let's call it data washing. Everybody wants to put the word data in front of their title, in front of their company, so that they sound more exciting, more relevant. But it may be an illusion. Just watch out. What's a data scientist? I read somewhere data scientist is a statistician that's living in San Francisco. That's one. And then another one said, a data scientist is a computer scientist that knows more statistics than an average statistician, or a statistician that knows more computer programming than an average computer programming person. That's kind of like a tongue twister. Um, but at the end of the day, if you want to look at data science, it's actually like you said, there are four um, ends to this. There is communications, statistics, programming, business. If you only know communications, you're nothing but hot air, right? If you only know statistics, you're a data nerd. If you only know programming, congratulations, you're a hacker. If you know business, I think that's a bit too much, saying that, I know. It's not an accountant. I, I, I stole this from somewhere. I, I don't fully believe in it, but there are some fun parts in it. But at the end of the day, data scientist is the person that can do all four of these things at once. And, those of you who are familiar with the startup world would know the terminology unicorn, right? These companies that hit billions of dollars really fast, but they're really hard to come by. And I personally think a real data scientist is a unicorn as well. It's very hard to come by. It's hard to educate. It's hard to find these people. In fact, how many of you are familiar with the, uh, with the job called quants in Wall Street? Quants in Wall Street are people who have actually mostly no training in edu formal education in finance. These are people with PhDs in physics, PhDs in mathematics. They are extremely smart people, 
But what happens is when they graduate, a Wall Street company snatches them and puts them through a boot camp for domain knowledge for six months, and then they can use their smartness, expertise of, let's say, Brownian motion into how the stock markets work. And data, real data scientists is actually these type of people who are very, very smart, who have done their PhDs in some very theoretical and mathematical field. It could be physics, it could be computer programming, it could be statistics, and then you plop them in the middle of the sea of a data and ask them to basically make a new world for us. So I searched on LinkedIn this morning. In the US, there is 8,500 uh, job openings for data scientists. But also, we need to make sure that, again, there is a lot of terminology pr problems here. You see data scientist, analytics engineer. You will see the word data architect, which actually is a very important part of data science, but it's not a full data scientist. You may have the term data engineer, which is essential, but again, it's part of the solution. In fact, I think a real company that's uh, into this should have a data science group because you can't have all those four things in one person. That's highly unlikely. You bring like-minded people who can communicate well, and then they create data science for you. I did the same search for Turkey. We got 23 results this morning. And I just wanted to highlight this fun here. Data science engineer, I think they just heard, I mean, I don't want to sound cruel, but it's a bit of two buzzwords in one. But anyways, but at the end of the day, I, I, have, I have been in Turkey for three years now, and I have gone through a lot of different companies. All big companies are very aware of the fact that we are in front of this data avalanche, and if you don't know how to deal with it, you're going to be swallowed up by it. So companies are actively trying to figure out what they want to do with it. And I think the market is only going to grow. So that's why you need to go and get degrees from Madrid or Istanbul, but go get a degree, right? Talking about degrees, are there possibilities to get these degrees? In the US, in 2007, there was only one data analytics, thanks to SAS. SAS Institute, in collaboration with North Carolina State University, opened up the world's first analytics center where they were doing one year boot camp style master's program. And now we have over almost 200 programs in the US only. How, isn't, how are we doing in Turkey? We have five. Um, Sabanji program has been around and Bahçeşehir program has been around since 2014, 2014 fall. Uh, Shahir has a Master of Science in Data Science. That's actually a multi-year program where you have to be go there full time. And that's been going, I think, for one year. MEF University, our program, I started last year, and it's just about to graduate its first cohort. And next year, TED University is starting a Master of Science in Data Analytics. And I'm shocked at this, because when I came to Turkey three years ago to start the program in Bahçeşehir, I thought within one year, Every big university, the ITUs, the Bilkants, the Boazichis, everybody would have had a data science program. But the problem with data science is, remember that four-folded uh, thing? That means you have to have multiple departments, almost also multiple faculties, multiple people involved. And I'm an academician, so I can bad mouth a little bit. Academicians love to work in silos. So you're a computer scientist, you don't really talk to anybody else from social sciences. Very rarely you do. If you're a social scientist, you're like, oh, I don't care what they're doing in the machine learning program. But in fact, I think we need, in companies, in universities alike, we need to get out of the silo mo mode. We really, if you want to capture the full meaning of data, every part of a business and every part of a university should be talking to one another. I really want to applaud, there are some grassroots efforts in Turkey. People just gather up and band and say, we're going to do something about data science. I think I want to give a shout out to two of these that I know. If you know others, please let me know after, during the break. One is Veribilim Istanbul. This is a Facebook group. It's, I think, more than 1,000 people now. And they do a lot of uh, events. Uh, they talk about artificial intelligence. They talk about machine learning. They talk, talk about deep learning. They actually do hands-on workshops. So this is a really great resource for those of you who are interested to learn more about data science. And the other one is Data Istanbul. This is, again, a, a, bag of, a bunch of ragtag um, students and uh, industry professionals. And they say, you know what? 
40 of us are really interested in learning more, and every week they gather and they either find somebody to lecture them on a certain topic, or they actually bring an industry expert and have them tell these group about their <coughs> industry experience. And for those of you who are looking to hire people, these are also great people, places to hire people. So I would note that. And let's get back to today's main topic, social good. I think when people talk about data analytics, the first thing you think about is a recommendation engine. Like, how can I sell more? The first thing you think about is how can I um, do something money related? But in fact, if data is going to be a big part of our life, it should be a big part of our life in a social responsible way. So in Turkey, we, have, we are have seeing small blossoms of this, but in, in the world, there is more of this. This organization is an organization that I really like. It's called DataKind. They have many projects. They have, for example, one project that actually tries to use a system for West African women to give them some basic training on any topic they want through SMS. They have another system, they have another project where they look at streets in Seattle and New York City and look at data to figure out how to make it more um, safe. There are many projects like this, and I think in Turkey we need to see more of these projects. When, I, when, I, when we were preparing for this conference, I scratched the service and I talked to a lot of different organizations. And Tabit was definitely, Tulina can, I mean, she's an exemplary woman. She, she, she's definitely the fourth front runner in this, uh, in this social good data for social good um, in Turkey. But I think that we should see more, we need to see more of these. I know there are a lot of companies that, that in Turkey that, and NGOs that do social good, but they need to be able to marry social good with data. And I really would like to thank TTGV for their sponsorship and uh, leadership in this regard, because it, they are really providing us this platform and many other platforms to, 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 uh, to spread the word, if you will. I want to end with this. I think we are in a very dark time, not in, the Tur not in Turkey, but in the whole world. Things are not looking great, but I, really, I'm a, I am an optimist. I, I believe in, uh, in the basic goodness of people. I think the next renaissance and reformation is upon us. Maybe not tomorrow but sometime soon, and I think the manifesto that will be nailed on the coffin of a, uh, on the door of a church is going to be written by data scientists. Thank you. Yes. <laughs>